cast your mind back to last season. In fact, cast your mind back to um, almost every season that I can think of um, with West Ham when we've come close to qualifying for European football. And I've often said, I don't want it. It's not I don't want European football per se, but it's this particular incarnation of European football, the Europa League, which is basically, it's rehashed. It's the UEFA Cup, isn't it? Um, Not that I've got anything against that per se in terms of a secondary European competition, which is what it is. This is the top, this is the second competition. Champions League is the top competition. The the Tottenham one is, is the well, they call it the Conference League, it is, in essence, the conference version of European football, isn't it? Um, I've got nothing wrong, I've nothing against that second tier, per se, but it's the fact that it's almost impossible to get kicked out of it. There's a safety net there, it's used as a buffer for the teams in the Champions League, like, might even be Barcelona this season, I'm not going to lie, I haven't checked it recently, but I know they'd not be doing as well as in, re- in recent years. So almost... We can't have Barcelona getting kicked out of Europe, so then they'll go into the Europa League. I think uh, I've often been suspicious that it puts too much strain on the schedule for clubs, and that in turn has made me look back historically at, at some of the clubs who have have not been a traditional top six club, and look at how they've struggled in the league because they've been playing in Europe. And I'm not talking about what seems to have happened to West Ham, which is. Basically, we lose to Man U because we played in Europe. We lose to Brentford because we played in Europe. I don't mean that, that it's the immediate game after. I mean it's because it impacts their whole league campaign. So that that also worried me. And then it certainly I, I felt we didn't have the squad for it this time. Well, I, I tell you what, I've been proved wrong on pretty much every count. Actually, the competition has its merits. And that that little fa- facet that that allows the top teams from the Champions League to drop down. Well, if you win your group, that doesn't count. You go straight into the, the 16, into the last 16. They all fight out in the last 32. Well, I think that's a really, really good thing. But it's only a good thing if you can win your group. Now, I'm not going to lie. If you'd have asked me last season, would I have confidence that West Ham would go into a European group and win the group... I'm not so sure. I wasn't even sure that David Moyes would take the competition seriously. Those are the sort of doubts I I, I had. But boy, was he taking it seriously. By he, he did a bit of both. And, and this is squad rotation at its finest. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to praise David Moyes. Here's another one. Took it seriously enough to pay Suchek, Cresswell um, and Rice, amongst others. But kept uh, Antonio for the Tottenham game. Um... And I just didn't think that would be something that he would he would do. Not so much for this game. I don't think for this game, but the start of the season, would he take the Europa League seriously? No, I didn't think so. I was I'm not even I've never been convinced that Moyes wanted to do that. Does Moyes want to win the FA Cup? I've never been convinced. I'll tell you what, he just keeps proving me wrong. And what it's done by us getting three wins out of three, nine points on the board, no goals conceded, and been utterly dominant in this group. Is it's it's basically wipes all those concerns and erased them. It's just it's got rid of them all because you look at where we are in the league and we're doing all right. I say all right. Listen to me. Talk about somebody who's got used to success, and I say you know obviously relative success. I I think one point off the top four is all right. No, it, it's exceptional. It's really good to be a top ten team. And to be able to progress into the knockout stages in Europe is remarkable. Look, it might not be remarkable if you're Chelsea, right? No, OK, you should be able to do that. But they've got the squad for it. All these top teams and big teams have got the squad for this sort of thing. But when you can't take a player and you can't, I, I don't know, pick your, on, honestly, pick your player, when you can't take out... Laporte and put John Stones in when you can't take out Kevin De Bruyne and put Bernardo Silva and when you can't swap your team to that extent then it it really brings in squad rotation as a massive factor and he's just doing it so 
well. Even the last substitutions of that game, and I don't mean Daniel Chester's. Well done, Daniel Chester's, by the way. All right? I mean Fornells and Ben Rama for Vlasic and Bowen. The game was done. It was 3-0. Moisey, cautious Moisey. All right, we, we might be critical of Moisey for being cautious. Um, It's working. A lot of the criticisms that people have had about David Moyes and or suspicions, and I've had some of them, they, they, they don't stand up anymore. Mine that he wouldn't take Europe, Europe seriously, he has. He has micromanaged this European campaign to the point where we, we're almost there. We might even be mathematics. We're six points ahead. Six points ahead in the group. It's amazing. Still three games to go. We've played everybody now. Um, it's going to be a hard push to think that we won't get at least one more win. And if we get one more win, we're hardly likely to win the group. Um, well, I think we can. Anyway, I've, I've, what, what, whatever. I, you know, I've, I've not looked at it, but it's looking pretty damn good. Win the group last 16. Last 16 of a European trophy. Can we not start to dream then? Um, because, oh, look, it's two legs. My my suspicion is we don't have any experience of that sort of thing, you know, to play in the teams over the two legs and, and that sort of thing. The group stage is slightly different. You know what? We had no experience of being, doing a group stage and we did that all right. Um, I think the key might be winning the group and by qualifying for the last 16, you miss out a whole round of it. Maybe that, that almost... And the gates, the, the the concern that we might have had for Ben Rama being away, that gets him to get the African Cup of Nations out of the way. Maybe we bring some players in in January. It's, it's, it's another video. It's another thing to discuss. I understand that, but two legs, last sixteen, we ain't a bad team. We are not a bad team. Look, you've got to you've got to appreciate anybody that we're playing in the last sixteen is going to be good. Anyone that we play is going to be maybe as dominant as we have been in, in our group so far. But to go and win in Europe is not easy. I, I think I, I said this in the review last night. It's, there's a temptation to look at these games and look at the opposition when you see them there and think, oh, Genk, we should beat them. Or Rapid Vienna, we should beat them. Dynamo Zagreb, we should beat them. Not necessarily. You've only got a look at Tottenham. Tottenham lost in the, what's it, in the Europa Conference Cup. They lost. It's not called that to us. <laughs> um, it, Man United, I mentioned it last night, they, they, young boys, they, they, you know, the crap a result against young boys. Leicester, Leicester, a good team. Leicester arguably got a better squad than us. Brendan Rodgers, good manager. Yeah, they not, you know, these teams are not going out there and having 100% records in their groups. We are. It's not a given. It's not easy. These teams are ready for West Ham. Genk were ready for West Ham. They were not bad at all. They had a game plan, they had fit, they had motivated players, they had fast players, they had good players. Yet, we beat them 3-0. 3-0. Um, I would argue we're one of the few teams, actually, in the Premier League that look like a dominant Premier League team. We're one of the few teams that are saying, look, this is, the Premier League is whatever the most expensive league in the world or whatever the title may be. We're a team from it. We're a European team, and we're playing like it. We're playing with confidence. We we look like we have the better players. But I can't help thinking we're doing it, and we managed to do it even at Genk with one arm tied behind our back. There were times during the game I thought we didn't have a. It it, it was evident we didn't have a striker. Um, but I'm also mindful that 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 that's two games now. Everton and the Genk game, where I thought we've lacked a cutting edge, but we've won both games. Um, well, that that's pretty good. That that's pretty good. I mean, if if it works out that you know we've wrapped Antonio in Cottonwall and he produces a rampaging performance against Tottenham and um, and we move on now to a to a big league game, then then great. But you know, even even the fact that we might not have that cutting edge and we're we're still finding a way to win, that's great. Those are other things for David Moyes to work on. Um, I like the fact that he got Cresswell off. He got Declan Rice off. It's fine. Let's wrap those guys in cotton wool. Um, got enough out of them. Got a tune out of them. I thought Rice was was decent again. But 
there's a tempo to our play in Europe as well. We don't, I don't feel like we're exerting ourselves in the same way that we do in the Premier League games. Again, it, 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 it's happened enough times where you think that's a plan. Look, I know it's not as fast paced. I know it's not as fast paced, but there's something to be said for the way we're having this possession, and there's something to be said for the fatigue levels. How they've got to, it got to, has to work in our favour that we're not chasing the ball all the time in these games. Actually, we're the ones with the ball. So we're going to see the team chasing the ball and pressing. That's going to have to run further. Very impressive again. And I, I did videos again. I mean, I just keep getting proved wrong on a lot of things. I thought. I think it was the first, after the first time I saw Yarmolenko this season, I thought, that that's it. I, I can't imagine Moyes playing him again. But he seems to have got him up fit. He seems to have got him firing. Um, he's one of the players that I feel that international football has benefited. Almost Ukraine have got, um, the, the appearances for Ukraine have got him that match sharpness. I felt it was a dip after Euros for Yarmolenko. I thought he looked sharp. I thought he looked really, really good. Really good. And I just felt that everybody did their job. Um, we were better than Genk. Do I think it was a 3-0 game? I don't, but that's OK. That's, that's absolutely fine. It makes it all the more impressive. How, you can't stop saying the phrase, because it's West Ham, and the phrase is, that we used to say all the time, you know, good teams win when they're not playing particularly well. We can't go through your your foot, your football in life using that cliche and not apply it to your own team. Um... I don't think we were terrible, by the way, but it was a cutting edge thing. Same against Everton. Um, but I'll tell you what, if we're going to start scoring from set plays again, if we're going to start adding that string to our bow, then, um, <laughs> you know, long may it continue, you know, as long as we're getting corners. And sometimes I feel we're playing for corners. Um, if we're doing that, then then we'll be all right. Then we're, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm hugely excited, hugely excited by this. This is absolutely magnificent. Um, what we're doing... Now, in particular, as well, is we're buying ourselves time. We're absolutely buying ourselves time now for, um, I think, possibly for the last two games. If you, if we can win, look, I think 12 points does it. If we can get the, the 12 points in our next game, it means we've got two more where he really can take his... He doesn't have to play Rice, doesn't have to play Suchek then. He can... But team, I think Crowell would have played in this game, by the way. I have to say, Crowell had COVID. Um, he would have played. I'm pretty sure he would have done. But that was fine as well. I still felt that, um, despite the fact that he'd had the stitches, did you see how Suchek played? It was fully committed, fully committed. If you saw the, the bit where the Genk player was lying around on the floor, holding his face, I mean, you must have thought exactly what I thought, you know, what you're doing. You know, you look at what Suchek had done and look how Suchek wanted to come back onto the pitch after he'd had all those stitches and all the rest of it. That has to count for something when you have a player that's that committed. And you get the impression there's lots of them like it, don't you? And you, you see it a lot when you see these other teams. You, you think, you haven't got battlers. And this is part of it. And maybe this is what we're going to see with Vlasic. Maybe that's it. Because I certainly saw him tracking back an awful lot. Maybe we've just got another battler. And it counts as something. It's not all tricks and flicks and pirouettes and rabonas and... I was trying to think of another one now. Come on, give me another nutmegs. There you go. Call them panners now, funny enough. Um, it's not all about that, is it? There's something to be said for endurance. There's something to be said for strength, will to win, battling, to, to, get, a, to get a kick in the face and want to carry on. Um, they didn't have it. And they're not on their own. There's, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They haven't got that. We've got it in abundance, absolute abundance. And somehow David Moyes has managed to blend together work rate, commitment, possession, a defence and still attack. Granted, I'm, listen, I, I wanted to address this actually after the Everton game. You know, I didn't suggest we didn't attack against Everton. A few people said, oh, I thought we played well. I thought we did attack against Everton. A few people said that in the comments. I didn't say we didn't attack. I said we lacked the cutting edge, that final little pass, that final shot. It was, you know, lacked a bit of accuracy. We, we, accuracy. We, we got near the goal and we didn't we didn't look clinical. All right? Um, so I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about we don't just sit back and defend. This this incarnation of David Moyes is, is seems very different from the first one where 
never forget the, the game. Was it 19% possession? I think the longer it goes on, the it's sort of a bit like folklore. The longer the story goes on, the less the possession gets. I'll be telling the story in 10 years' time. At that time, we had 5% possession. But it was, it was, I felt it was around 20, you know, whatever, 21, 20, 19% possession. It was his first stint. There's something different now. We have a control of the game. It's just a very, very different West Ham. And um, it's hard. He's been here over 18 months now in his second stint. And we've had plenty of evidence. But that 18 months or whatever it might be has got to go against me with 40-odd years of seeing something completely different. So it's hard. It's hard for me uh, to adjust to this. It's hard to go into um, a European game thinking, OK, well, we're going to win this and to think that we're dominant and to think that we're in control. And both those things are true. In our group, we are dominant and we are in control. It's, it's weird. It's weird. I will get used to it. 